Good morning, Bulldogs. Happy Monday. I hope you guys all had a good spring break or as good as can be expected under these uh, conditions that we've all been facing. Um, so it's April 20th. Um, it's our seventh round of these three-day schedules. Um, and we're going to continue with the Industrial Revolution. Um, I'm going to try to keep this video short because today I want you to do most of the talking and not so much me which is normally how I want the classes to be anyway, right? Um, some headlines from the New York Times from this morning. Um, the United States now faces the most cases of the coronavirus in the world. And unfortunately, we've also suffered at least 36,000 deaths. Um, they don't even have that growing map that I've continued to show you guys. Uh, some Americans uh, are demanding an end to social limits. There's been some protests throughout the United States and Michigan, um, Washington state is the, uh, photo you see here, um, and some other places. Um, the articles show that they've been encouraged, um, by the president. Um, it's been a, been, been a hot political topic, I guess, um, the past week. Uh, feel free to, you know, prose these articles. Uh, governor's plot to reopen the economy. Um, but say they lack tests, meaning coronavirus um, tests. But if, in order to open things back up, they have to make sure it is safe to do so. So over break, there's been some um, alliances, if you will, of different governor groups, uh, one on the West Coast and one out here, um, sort of spearheaded by New York's Governor Cuomo. New Jersey is a part of it. Um, Massachusetts, uh, a whole bunch of Northeast states so that when we reopen, we sort of have like a, a plan and, and, and how to do it together. There is an opinion. Um, I, this isn't like a news story, but there is an opinion section on the New York Times and the opinion, one of the top stories there, I put the um, title in bold here. It says, we need a new social contract for the coronavirus. And when I read that, I was sort of proud saying my students should know what they mean by uh, social contracts. Some people may look at that and be like, well, what is they, are they talking about? You guys should know because we learned extensively with the social contract and the different views by Rousseau and Locke and, and Hobbes. Um, and I think even Wollstonecraft. So you know what a social contract is. Um, if not, you know, feel free to ask me to review or I'll show you the videos to review. Um, this is about how we need to sort of come together to make a new plan um, for how we respond to the coronavirus as a society, not so much um, from the government. Um, and it's by David Kessler. And he is the former um, head, if you will, of the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration. We're going to learn about how the FDA was created during the Industrial Revolution. So it, once again, everything we learn about sort of blends together. Um, the BBC um, top news stories. The first one was an unfortunate story that the gunman, uh, there's a gunman who killed at least 16 in rural Canada in Nova Scotia, which is uh, on this island here. So notice like we're here and then here's um, Nova Scotia. Uh, I believe he was dressed as a police officer or in a police looking vehicle um, and was ultimately killed by the police. Uh, there's an article that Germany um, is easing restrictions on some shops there, which have been closed due to the coronavirus. Um, it has to be small shops uh, where the square footing is not like, um, you know, the big box stores. And so only so many people can be allowed inside at any given time. There's also a story about Richard Wadani. He was an Austrian um, who was uh, a Nazi soldier, but who deserted. I believe he went to Switzerland. Um, and if you read it, it's a pretty interesting article. I may save it to bring it up when we do cover World War II. Um, but he unfortunately died at the age of 97. So for today, um, you will be doing Flipgrid. Um, it's something my classes did last year. We didn't do it this year. Um, but I think now would be a good time to introduce it. You may have used it in other classes. I know, um... I think Ms. Pascalone's class has used it this year. Um, it's pretty easy to use. If you have any trouble signing on, let me know. I'm going to try to respond to the emails as quick as possible this morning. Um, and that's how we're going to do our journal today. Um, we're going to have our class discussion via a, a Flipgrid. Um, and it's a Charles Dickens passage that relates to um, the Industrial Revolution. 
from his novel Hard Times, which we will be reading a little bit about. Please read the directions on Canvas. You do not need to show your face. I know my daughter is not showing her face on any of her Google Hangouts, so she has to be in her classes, and that's totally fine. And there's also another link where if you just want to say hello, chat about what's going on, how you're feeling, uh, show a pet, uh, a sibling, you know, as long as it's school appropriate, feel free. Also, don't forget the April project. A few of you have worked on that already. Um, to do as best as you can, you want to sort of get a jump start on that to take advantage of the days that are remaining of the month of April. So I give you one more quick example. Some people have been doing it, I've seen already, but have sort of missed some of the directions. So please look at the examples I set. So today, born on this date in 1826 was Dinah Craig. Um, she was an English novelist and poet alive once again during the Industrial Revolution. And um, if I was really trying to make this uh, my project, I would, in my document, share how she relates to the Industrial Revolution. One of her poems is A Ghost at the Dancing. I put literally just a few minutes of work into this. Um, I, I could have tried to make this better, but just to show you guys an example um, of the beginning of this poem of hers, A Windswept Tulip Bed. A colored cloud of butterflies careering in the air, and many figured are ass stirred to life, and merry unto midnight music dumb. So the dance whirls. Do any think of thee? A meal? A meal? Friends greet each other. Countless rills of talk meander around, scattering a spray of smiles. Surely the news was false. One minute more, and thou wilt stand there, tall and quiet eyed, Shakespeare. Beauty and beauty in the pensive face, a meal, a meal. And if you go on to read the entire poem, it actually is unfortunate and about a funeral and, and, a, and a death of a, a friend. And I thought of many unfortunate ways that does relate to the coronavirus, which we're trying to do with this assignment, it make it contemporary. But I was actually reading over the weekend about the tulip and the rose industry and all these flowers um, that are, that were being grown for events that are now being canceled, uh, weddings, um, just to have at restaurant tables, uh, dates and all these things. And all these flowers are now getting just destroyed, um, because they're not even being sent to market. And I just sent a, a photo of these Dutch tulips. They're just being like tossed, tossed out. Um, you know, it's not as bad as the people losing their lives or jobs or all those to the coronavirus, but there's still so many ways that it affects our society if we stop and think about it. So I'm done talking. Um, if you have any questions, uh, email me. Um, I look really forward to seeing the, the Flipgrid videos um, and seeing how everyone's doing and seeing how you respond to this Charles uh, Dickens quote. I think it's really pertinent to what a lot of us have been experiencing. Um, so I'll see you soon, I hope, if not in person, at least through these videos and, and through Flipgrid. All right. Have a great day, everyone. Be well.